Hi everybody, by the end of this video, you'll understand how to use Lucid ORM to retrieve data from a specific table in your database, as well as any related data. Now the code I'm using in this demonstration comes from my course, Building a Simple API Using Adonis.js. So if you need to get up to speed, I recommend you check it out. The code is hosted on GitHub, and I've put links down below the video to both the code and to my course. If you are using my code, make sure that you run your migrations and get some data in your database so you can actually follow along. And finally, if you haven't subscribed yet, do that right now so you don't miss any future videos. Once you're all set up, just grab your favorite drink and we'll get started. Now, Lucid relations are all about how the different tables in your database are related to each other. And we define these relationships within our model files. Let's take a look at the basic example in the documentation to understand how this works. On the relations page in the docs, we go to basic example. And here we have the case of a user and a profile. So in our database, we'll have a users table and we'll have a profile table. What is the relationship between the two? Well, we can say that this, meaning this user, has one profile. So we just write it out like that. This has one, and then we point to the profile. What's being passed in here is the namespace for the profile model. And if you don't know what a namespace is, be sure to watch my other videos on understanding the IOC container and understanding service providers. That will give you a good idea of how this works under the hood. So now that we've established that relationship in the user model, the user has one profile, we can also set up a relationship on the profile model. So on the profile model, we wouldn't say that the profile has one user. We'd instead say that the profile belongs to a user. So let's jump up here to the table of contents again. You can skip down to belongs to, and we can see that that's how we write it. This, meaning the profile model, belongs to a user. And that's how we set up our relationships. Now that we have that information, let's go back to our example with customers and projects. So from the perspective of the customer, could you say the customer has one project? Not really. A customer can actually have many projects. So what's the relationship there? You would say the customer has many projects. So if you scroll back up to the table of contents, you'll see that there is a has many relationship that we can set up here. So you click on that and you can see the example. In this case, user and posts is being shown. We have this, meaning the user, has many posts. Seems pretty similar to what we have. Customers has many projects. So how would we write that? Pause the video right now, take about 30 seconds to see if you can figure that out. And once you're done, come back and we'll compare notes. Okay, did you get it done? All right, let's check. I'm gonna go through it and you can follow along. To set up our relationship with projects, we write a function called projects. And within this function, we're simply returning our relationship. Return this, meaning our customer, has many. And we have to use the namespace for our projects model. So it's app models slash project singular. And now that relationship is successfully set up. Now let's set up our relationship between a project and its customer. So this time we'll go to our project model file. And we're setting up a relationship with a customer. So we simply put a customer function right here. Notice I use the singular form and we return our relationship. This customer, or rather this project, belongs to a customer. App models customer, singular. And now that relationship is set up. Now take a look at the files we have for task model and here for the project model and see if you can set up the same relationships between projects and their tasks. Pause the video right now and give that a shot and then when you're done, come back and we'll compare notes again. How do you think you did? Well, since we're in the projects model, let's start with setting up our relationship to our tasks. So a project will have many tasks. So we'll simply create a function with tasks being plural and we'll return this project has many tasks. Now we'll go to our tasks file and we'll set up the other relationship. This task will have one project, right? It'll belong to one project. So we set up a project function, singular, return this task belongs to a project. And that's done. Pretty simple. 
Now that we have these relationships defined in our models, we need to know how to use them, and we use these within our controllers. Let's begin first with our customers. When we load a list of customers, we want to bring in each project along with those customers. So we start with our index method, and rather than use the customer.all method to grab all of the customers, we have to use the query builder to load our relationship. So instead of await customer.all, we'll access the query builder first, and we'll call the width method to load our relationship with projects. And projects here corresponds to the function name that we set up on our customer model. And every time we use the query builder like this, we have to use fetch at the end. So now our customers will be a list of customers, and each customer will have a list of all the projects as well. So jumping over to Postman, we'll try that out, make sure we have our server started. Adonis serve dev. And we fetch our customers. And here we'll see we have our customers, Peter Parker with a property on that customer object with an array of projects. Okay, now that we have that working, I'd like you to try something else on your own. Jump on over to the project controller and load a list of projects, each with their customer. Be sure to test it out in Postman to make sure it works. Pause the video right now, and when you're done, come on back and we'll compare notes again. Okay, how did you do? Did you get it working? Let's jump over our project controller and we'll do it together now. So instead of calling project.all, I want project.query to access the query builder with our relationship, loading our customer. It's singular because our projects belong to a single customer. And don't forget to call fetch at the end. If you don't call fetch, you'll see some weird behavior. And let's give this a try. So instead of getting a list of our customers now, we'll get a list of our projects. We'll send that request. And now we have all of our projects. And for each project, we have a customer property on that object that has the details for the owning customer. It's time for you to pause the video yet again and try something else. We're in the project controller, and I would like you to load not just the customer for each project, but also the associated tasks. So how would you do that? Pause the video, give it a shot, and then come on back and see how you did. Did you get it working? Okay, let's try it ourselves. Not only will we load with customer, but we simply load with tasks. We already have the relationship set up within our model, and so we can just call it right here. Let's give this a shot. So now when we retrieve our data, we have our project, we have our customer, and then we have each task associated with that project. Now what we're doing with the with method here is called eager loading, and we should jump over to the documentation to make sure we understand it. Opening our relationships documentation again, we go down to the eager loading tab, and we see an example here of fetching posts for a list of users. So a bad way to do that would be to fetch our list of users and looping over each user, query the database yet again to get, to get a list of the posts. This is what's known as an n plus one problem. This means that for each user that we've queried, we also have to query yet again for each set of posts. And this is a huge performance hit. It is not what you want to do. So instead, we use eager loading to make sure that everything's taken care of in one query. So scroll down to the bottom, and you can see the good example, what we do want to do, matches what we did in our code. So give that a little read, make sure you understand it. And if you have any questions about that, of course, put it down below the video. Now it's time for the final challenge. I'd like you to load a list of tasks, and for each task, I would like to see its owning project. Make sure you go to Postman and test it out to make sure it works. Pause the video right now and give that a shot. Did you get it working? Let's do it together. We'll jump over to our task controller, and here we're loading a list of our tasks. Const tasks equals await, never forget that await keyword, task.query with project, singular, and our all important fetch. We'll open Postman. Now we'll get a list of our tasks. Send that request. And now we have our tasks, and for each task, we have its owning project. So if you got this working, good for you. If not, if you had any trouble at all, post those questions down below the video. Give this video a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe because I have a lot more videos coming your way. Thanks, and see you next time.